I'm Parul Khanna. I work with um, the Micro Pension Foundation. Uh, what we do is we help low-income workers make savings for their old age. Um, what I'm going to talk to you about today is how all of you sitting here could actually potentially help increase the savings of these low-income workers in India by a thousand percent. Before I do that, I actually wanted to tell all of you in the room and say how lucky all of you are, how privileged and blessed you are. Um, for those of you who are young, I'm sure most of you here are, you're ambitious, you want to change the world, you want to make your millions. Um, for those of you who haven't started, you probably open your bank accounts, get credit cards, get debit cards, get a loan when you need one, get a loan for things that sometimes you don't need one for. You'll, 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 you know, you'll have a plethora of financial services at your doorstep. You'll get uh, health insurance, you'll get a life insurance, you'll probably get corporate pension. You're well on your way. And I'm hoping that you'll also be a bit disciplined to put some money away and save some for that ideal home that you want, the big car that you want, and retire one day. When I say retire, it means that you will stop working and you will reap the benefits of your savings while you were young. Now let me ask you this one question. At what age do you think you will retire? At age 50? Worst case scenario, 60? And for some of you in the room, or probably you have friends who will aspire to retire by age 40. I hope some of you do that because I missed the bus. Now let me ask this question a little differently, with a slight change. You are now a farmer. You're now a vegetable vendor. You're now domestic help. At what age do you think now you will retire? I'm quite certain in your head the answer is you don't know, which is probably true. But when you think a little deeper, you will get an answer and you will think and say, you will probably keep working till the time that you can. But does that potentially mean that you will never retire? We have a few stories that we wanted to just share with you. My name is Jola Basad Ji. I'm 13 years old. I'm 10 years old. I'm not here. 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 अब बचत नहीं करी मतलब उसी में रहे नियत करते रहे खर्च करते रहे अच्छा खासा खर्च करते आज खर्च करने की इनकी स्थिति नहीं है दो तीन बार मतलब नाश्ता वगैरह करते हैं अब किसी दिन एक एक दिन रोटी नहीं भी बनती है समय ऐसा हो जाता है पानी बरस गया काम नहीं हुआ तो खाली लेटे हैं मेरा नाम शमीम बानो है मेरी उम्र बासठ साल है और मेरे दो लड़के हैं दोनों लड़के शराबी है शराबी टेंटारी है और हम यहाँ भी भी अलग रहती है मैं तो यही सोच रही थी जो कमा रही हूँ वो बचा रही हूँ अब मुझे क्या पता था कि आगे चलके हमारी किस्मत खराब हो जाएगी हम तो अपने बच्चों पे लुटाते रहे खिलाते रहे कमाते रहे पालते रहे बहुत हमने भी काम करा दिल्ली में फैक्ट्रियों में जब हम जवान थे जब हम भी खूब काम कर कर के बच्चों को पाला This is the story of 90% of India's workforce. We're a nation which has 1.2 billion people. Nearly about 500 million people are in the workforce. But out of that, 90% of the people are self-employed. They don't have employers. They don't have any form of social security and they certainly don't have pensions. So what do you think their retirement plan looks like? Bhagwan, Bacche, Kismat? God, children and fate, and to all of you in your mind, I'm sure that's not a very strong portfolio. Let me show you another image. Yes, I'm using it as an image. It's a graph. If you look at the three colors, that is saffron, white and green, those roughly represent about 110 to 135 million people in each bracket. Saffron represents those, of those people who are able to save yet are excluded from formal finance. The white band represents those people who do not get any, any, any money for the, way, for the work that they do. And the green band represents those people who work, but they do not make enough money to make ends meet. 
It is only the blue chakra, which represents 50 million of those people who get any form of social, social security. These could be your defense personnel, civil servants, or any of the formal corporate employees. So if something is not done, and done really quickly for the people in the orange band, we run the risk of the entire space going green. Let me give you some more troubling stats. We have about 100 million people in 2010 who are above the age of 60, who are already aged. By 2050, this number is going to triple to 3 million people. The cost to the government to, to provide monthly pensions to these 300 million people is going to cost a whopping 130 trillion rupees, and that is 4% of the GDP. Put that a little more in perspective. Currently, we spend 3% of our GDP on education and about 1% on sanitation, public health, and water supply. So what do we do now? There are less than 5% taxpayers who pay tax, so there's no way that we can accumulate something sensible to be able to pay these 300 million destitute anything. Where does the answer lie in all of this? What, what could be the next step? Clearly, taxation is not the way to do it. The only answer is in self-help and thrift. If the youth of today is actually told that they can do something today and save today to have a better dignified old age, will they be able to reap the benefits at that age? The government has started to do some of its part. They introduced the national pension scheme for the people in the orange band that I had shown you earlier, where they are able to save. So the amount of savings that they do and the kind of returns they get defines the amount of pensions that they will start getting at age 60. The government also co-contributes into the pension accounts and does not penalize them for any sort of um, money that they may not be able to, if they're irregular of any sort. It's a beautifully designed scheme. However, the scheme was introduced in 2006 and only about 3 million people have actually attached themselves with the scheme. That is less than 1% of the target audience of the 300 million people that we're looking at. The government is trying to do its part, but clearly it's not working. It needs more. And it's not that this income group is actually voluntarily going out and looking for a pension scheme either. So what is it that we can do? Is this something that all of us sitting here can do? Is this something that we can do as a civil society? Can we then go out and look for those 300 million people who we've never met? We don't know who they, what they look like, who they are. The answer is again, probably no. But what if I say that you can do something for that one life that touches your lives every day? It could be your maid, your driver, your guard, your washerwoman, the guy who sells you paratas every morning, your barber. It seems plausible now, doesn't it? You could do it for that one person. Okay. Let me put it a little differently. What if I say that you could visualize going back home today and talking to one of the domestic help that you have in your lives and tell them the importance of setting aside some money for their old age. And you could get on the internet and do just 10 minutes of some tippity tap and you could open a pension account for them. It seems, it seems doable. And if you do that, and if your answer is yes, that you can do it, then just 10 minutes would potentially change 20 years and give a dignified old age to your domestic help. And if we as a total civil society can do that for just this community, we can potentially change the lives of 40 million domestic workers in India. And that incidentally is a number larger than the total population of Canada. Let me show you another concept Phil, of what I'm going to really talk to you about. This is Shanta. She's 22 years old. She lives in a little village far away with a husband and three children. But her family struggles to make ends meet. So Shanta decides to migrate to your city in search of work. You employ her as your maid. She works long hours. She takes care of your children. She cooks your meals and keeps your house clean. She sends most of her income back home to support her family. 
to put food on their table and send her children to school so that they may have a better life than hers. She does this year after year after year. When she's too old to work, Shanta returns to her little village. Her children are now grown up. They are educated and married, but have migrated to other cities. Shanta and her husband now live alone. But with no savings of their own, they struggle to make ends meet. They live without dignity and will live this way for the rest of their lives. But does it really have to be this way? Let's see this again. You employ Shanta as your maid. You talk to her about the importance of setting aside a small part of her income for her old age. And you spend just 10 minutes on the internet to help her open her own micro pension account. And so, Shanta starts saving every month for her old age. Her savings are managed by the likes of LIC, UTI and SBI and will grow over the years. When she's too old to work, Shanta will return home to her little village. She and her husband will still live alone, but they won't struggle to make ends meet. Because of Shanta's micro-pension savings, they will now get a monthly pension and will live with dignity for the rest of their lives. This could be the story of your maid, your driver, your gardener or guard. Just 10 minutes of your life changed 20 years of Shanta's life. You can be that change. Gift Shanta a micro-pension account today. Her clock is already ticking. Like the film said, it really takes 10 minutes. And it takes 10 minutes for you to do it while le without leaving the comfort of your homes. And if that can enable your domestic help to open her own pension account in a safe environment, I think it works. Gifttopension.com is the only e-commerce platform that involves social security inclusion in the world. However, there were a few things that we needed to take care of for you, for all of you sitting in this room and potentially the people who would use the platform. The first was convenience. How is it that we make it convenient for you? All you need to do is get online, fill in a few details of your domestic help, punch in the details. Within a few days, a courier reaches your home with the pre-filled forms. All your domestic help needs to do is sign and paste a photograph and the courier is picked up back from your house. Within a few days, the domestic help receives another, another courier which has the details of a pension account. She also gets a call to verify that and you receive an email to the same effect. The second was trust. In all of this, your domestic help is actually banking on you to do the due diligence to figure out whether the product and the scheme that you're talking about is for them or not. They're expecting you to make that informed decision or help them make that informed decision. It certainly helps if the scheme at the back end is that of the government of India and the life insurance product that is though given in this space is actually life, SBR life. The third is ongoing payments. I do hope that your domestic help stays with you for several years. Even if it is five years, it's a lot in made years. But I'm presuming they may not be with you for that long. But even if they are, you would want them to manage their savings on their own because you're so hoping in all earnestness to make that behavioral change for them where they have to understand money and potentially start moving money away for themselves. For this, we had come up with a prepaid card solution that we designed with Visa. And this can be used anywhere in the country with, with whether they have a bank account or they don't or they have internet access or they don't. This, and loading money onto the card is actually as simple as using their prepaid mobile phones. They exactly know what that drill is. That's exactly how this card works. The fourth one was customer servicing. Now, all of you have some sort of bank manager or you have something that you can pick up the phone and say, oh, I want to know more about the scheme or I want to open another account or I want to transfer money. Or you have some information or some query or some complaint. These people don't. So we have a helpline that actually speaks uh, in, is, is multilingual, speaks in about nine regional languages, where they can come up and give their complaints, their suggestions, any information, change of address, without having you involved in it. So the helpline speaks to them directly. In all of this, it seems to have started to work. We launched this platform in October 2014, and since then, 1,200 employers have registered the domestic help and this we did not do any advertising or any media or any publicity 
we did get some with economic times i'm very proud with mint and financial times and online huffington post which and something called your story i'm sure all of you know what that, all that is but there's the two things that actually yeah actually two things that really excited us in all of this the first was that the employers who came on our platform their enthusiasm was overwhelming they actually wanted to do it for the right reasons they actually gave us suggestions they were curious about information they wanted to know more some of them even said listen i want to tell you how you can market this better some of them wanted to be volunteers for us and the second was for all the domestic help that have actually signed up for this product for this scheme have been very regular with their contributions and for those of you who understand that sector regular contributions are very hard to come so these have been two very very encouraging things for us most of the enrollments have been from the mega cities um, delhi mumbai bangalore and the other cities like hyderabad pune smaller cities like lucknow have also started warming up there is one success story that i actually wanted to share with you it's of gauri who is a car cleaner she's she's a woman car cleaner and her employer gifted her a pension and the reason i want to share this with you not because she's been given a pension account because it is her aspiration that she always wanted to fulfill may it just come true for her take this main 26 saal ho gayi hain gaadi saaf karti hu koti mein bhi kaam karti hu तो पहले मेरा गुजारा नहीं हो रहा था बहुत कम पैसे मिलते थे मेरे आदमी को इसीलिए हम दोनों सोचे कि दो चार गाड़ी साफ करें अब करते करते छब्बीस साल हो गया इन्हीं दोनों में मेरे बच्चे बड़े हो गए मैंने पढ़ा लिखा है मेरे बेटा तो अच्छा है मॉल में काम करता है फिर भी मैं इसके ऊपर बोझ नहीं बनना चाहती मैं अपने बुढ़ापा के लिए माइक्रो पेंशन ले रखी हूँ मेरे बुढ़ापे का काम आ जाएगा ना मैं भी एक गाड़ी सेकंड हैंड गाड़ी ही खरीदूँ तो मैं भी ये सोचती कि मेरे लिए कोई गाड़ी साफ करने वाला मैं भी रखूँ सबके लिए करती हूँ मैं भी सोचती मैं भी करवाना चाहती हूँ I know it's it's just a beautiful story because I love the way she says that even she wants a second hand car and she wants to get a car cleaner to clean her, to clean her car We can all do this It took the government since it launched the scheme in 2006 but only 300 million people to do this But if all of us sitting here as a civil society decide to adopt that one life that we could touch when we go back today and just give a pension to that one person we could actually increase this number to 43 million and this could be done just by the weekend after all it's just like the video said it's 10 minutes of your time that can potentially change 20 years of your one dignified of your domestic helps life that you can actually give them all it takes is for you to be the change thank you thank you for being here and thank you for hearing me